There's a lot that I want to really ask you about this, uh, the, the, you know, the, the exhibition and everything. But the first thing I guess that I wanted to ask you about it was the motif of interiors, because would it be right to say that this is a motif that just enjoyed a great deal of popularity at the turn of the 20th century? And what, why would you, why is that? Um, I, I mean, I think as art was becoming more, um, you know, there was there was a greater outpouring of um, of artwork in the 19th century and it was becoming more democratised and it was kind of becoming less the preserve. I mean, it already had by the mid century, I guess, become less the preserve of the um, the nobility and upper classes. And it had become a middle class pursuit. Um, and with the opening of art sort of metropolitan art galleries, it also becomes something aimed at um, the working classes as um as a way of um, kind of educating and entertaining. So what you see is a greater outpouring of pictures that are designed to be uh, bought by middle class people. So in a way, these um, th there was a greater obsession and a greater availability uh, of, of decorative objects. And um, this is a, at the height of uh, manufacturing and um, at the height of you know, uh, trade and, and commerce for, for Britain in the 19th century from all over the world. So people were filling their homes with these incredible objects, um, which were influenced by uh, East African, um, sorry, uh, sort of North African and um, sort of Eastern uh, in inverted commas. Is, um, design um, and people were making their homes these kind of enchanted interiors so it made sense for them to be almost looking to buy pictures of enchanted interiors to to put within their own enchanted interior so there's this real passion uh, for the home reflecting one's taste and it would be something uh, that people would want to show off and um, gain cachet through and fashion in, in interior design was was becoming much more of a an available concept to people who were you know, the mercantile classes, for want of a better word. Um, so you do see that reflected in the in the art, in the paintings of, of the time. Um, this insistence on oh, soft furnishings and stuff. They're great, great collectors of stuff, the Victorians. And I guess you mentioned it a little bit uh, earlier, but I just wanted to kind of, uh, I wondered whether we could say more about this. How were women portrayed during this early period within this space? And were there uh, female artists who stood out within this uh, early period and countered uh, the way in which, the predominant way in which they were portrayed? Yeah, I mean, certainly you have, um, you know, the sort of, um, the, the classic pre-Raphaelite, uh, it's often, it's often, um, kind of put within um, mythology so you'd have these tropes that were very popular the lady of shallot um, is what you know you'd have the sort of um, passive beauties in, in in gorgeous spaces but um, you also have artists like Evelyn de Morgan who is a late sort of later phase pre-Raphaelite uh, woman who's um, very unconventional really um, and is putting images through that are explicitly challenging um the idea that the sort of passive captive woman uh, is, is in any way a good thing <laughs> for anyone. Um, and so she, uh, in her painting, um, The Gilded Cage, you know, she, she explicitly calls this painting The Gilded Cage um, and puts an actual gilded cage in it with these birds um, in it sort of as a metaphor for the, the woman who's bargained away her freedom um, to be kept and looked after. Um, so Evelyn de Morgan is um, is kind of an early feminist, really, and she was a supporter of women's suffrage. She was someone who she was a pacifist. She was someone who um, believed in equality, and she married the ceramicist William de Morgan, who was also from uh, a kind of non-conformist, um, pro-equality family and background. And her whole um, philosophy really was that nobody was going to yoke her into into marriage and um, and force her. To to be subservient or passive she wanted an equal creative partnership and a collaborative marriage and she found that in William de Morgan and there's two artists they they sort of sit together and they work together um, and neither of them sort of takes precedence and they, they look after each other's careers and their own so in her work you see much more of this um uh, Victorian uh, the, um, fight back against the old um, traditional um, conservative with a small c way of thinking. Uh, so you see in her work something of that shift um, that will take on, that will take flight more in the early 20th century and um, sort of transform uh, 
po politics and and the way, and the sort of social um, way of thinking about uh, women's place. Um, you do also see other, you know, you see women artists at the time, Henrietta Brown and Clementina Hull and photographers like uh, Clementina Howard and kind of um, doing a very, some, doing something a bit different, um, particularly Lady Howard. But, you know, she is a member of the aristocracy. So arguably it, it's not working women who are able to have artistic careers. It's still very much bound up in um sort of middle class and upwards uh probably you know all sort of non-conformist intellectuals who pursue artistic careers 